Hey there, Soul Shines. It's Michelle here, and today is Tuesday. I'm recording this on Tuesday because this week is a little bit on the insane side. It's just extra busy, and there's a lot going on, so I didn't get a chance to record yesterday. Um, so in this video, we're going to talk about kind of the different challenges that I'm participating in, um, things like that mystery crochet alongs if I'm doing any I'm not um, crochet alongs all the challenges all the things I'm going to talk about them all if I'm participating at least the ones that I'm aware of well no not even that because I'm aware of some that I'm not even considering um and I need to turn this down it's like so bright mmm before we continue so that I remember this time hook that subscribe button knit the like button and leave some yarn in the comments I I say it so much it's amazing I still forget it anyway um So, the mystery yarn challenge, there are people that did the yarn exchange. I was not in a position to do the yarn exchange. Probably won't be until maybe January if it's still happening. Um, just because life is life. Um, but, yeah. Um, she, this is... Um, Elaine at Penguin Place Crafts. I think it's her channel name. She has also a mystery yarn challenge. She has like a bingo game that she has going as well. And so I've kind of been working on the bingo game, kind of trying to encourage my daughter to work on the bingo game. Just looking at whether or not it's feasible. The biggest problem is that I also have other projects going on and it's like, oh, I did this one that would work here or here. I did this one and like, they're not working up on the bingo squares and I have so much going on. I may not get bingo. I It's okay if I don't get a bingo. Sorry, phone. It truly is okay if I don't get a bingo. If I, if it happens, it happens. We're already halfway through October. Had that happen. So we'll see. The bird of the month cow from Judy's Creation and Crochet. I have my yarn for that. I had, yesterday I picked my project for that. And hopefully today I will start doing it. I'm doing crochet because it will be faster and I have like a week to get this done in. I mean, probably a little more than a week, but if I tell myself I have a week to get it done in, then maybe I will get it done. We'll see. Um, so that's that. The 10 gram challenge. I brought the sweater with me. I showed it yesterday, but I'm gonna show it again. Um, it helps to consider it a challenge to do 10 grams. It means that like yesterday was kind of crazy, but I'm like doing my three rows. The only days I don't, well, I don't work on it on Sundays just because it's a choice I made for my Sundays. But also, um, uh, when I wasn't doing anything, but it's kind of like one of the first things, it's like I'm going to get my 10 grams done and then I can work on other stuff. So, um, for this sweater, and I just finished a second full 16 row, or third 16 row repeat, I think. Third. Fourth. I just, I was like, wait, I've been marking dots. I've got four dots. So I just, um, finished my fourth 16 row repeat to get my cable cat pattern, which is really fun. So there's um, over here, 
Well, first of all, the edges of this has a two by two ribbing. Then there's this little eight count thing. And I know it's not easy to see on the, the thing, but it's there. It's an eight count one. And then of course there's some pearls between because it helps things stand out. And then there's this little twist one. The twist stitch has been really fun to learn and experience, figure out and stuff. So um, I've got that going on. Another couple pearls. And then there's a 16 count um, stitch count cable, which it has been really fun. And then there's another twist and then there's the eight count another twist a 16 count another twist eight count and then the two way two ribbing at the ends with the side panels and of course i work up all three at the same time um and i've got to mess with my yarns but um there's the two by two on one side there is just um a an eight a twist a 16 and a twist and then of course on this side it's backwards to it where um so that they're mirroring each other so i've got my two by two ribbing and my two by two ribbing my eight count um cables my twists my 16 count cables my twists and then for the inside, it is a seed stitch. And of course, I mark where my buttonhole buttons will go on the same row. Where is it? That I put my little buttonhole. Um, so that when they're lined up across each other to button up, all those buttons will go in the right place and it will be awesome. Um, I brought my tape measure this time because I wanted to measure how long this actually is now because when I get to 13 inches I've got to start doing the neck shaping. I haven't actually measured this before. I just put a piece of paper up to get an idea. Um, but it's looking like we're currently sitting at between 11 and 3 fourths of an inch and 12 inches. I put 2 and 3 fourths between each button and I have about a fourth, which means, let's see, my next way across is a right side and then a wrong side and then a right side. I'm pretty sure I'm going to measure after my next right side because no it goes on the right side so I'll do my this right side I'll do that wrong side and it's probably my last row for today is the buttonholes I'm guessing but that's where I'm at. I've got to be careful about that and watch that. So anyway, here's something interesting I tried last night. Um, mirrored knitting or backwards knitting. Um, I was really curious about it. And I did try it on a section of this and it was working. Um, it's a little bit awkward and slower because it's new to me. Um, backwards knitting is not like about knitting left-handed um, there are people that like they literally knit left-handed and when you're knitting left-handed just like we would go in through the front of a stitch and do our wraparounds they would do it in the front of their stitch and do the wraparounds and they're just working the opposite way as us because they're going approaching from a left-handed backwards knitting though is actually not the same it's still working so usually when you're knitting you have your empty um empty needle in one hand your dominant hand or your right hand because a lot of left-handed knitters um just knit normal anyway so you'd have your 
empty needle in one hand and your um, your your yarn you're working off in the other so you work it off of your left onto the right as you're moving so all the stitches move off one side and onto the other um, and so for a left-handed person it goes or a left-handed person who chooses to knit left-handed they would have their empty needle in their left hand and they would work their stitches off their right needle and it's basically the same and the way that's mirrored is that if you put a mirror between the two they look like they're doing the same thing mirrored stitches or backward stitches um, when you are trying to do it so you don't turn your work doesn't look the same because a left-handed stitcher is going to go through the front of the needle just like we do um, from the right of the needle like we we're just doing the same thing and I can kind of I can't really show you great on here but I hold this is the one I'm gonna be working on so this is where I put my um, let me slide these out of the way so my empty needle is in my right hand and I would stitch by sticking it in through the front so I'm facing my work, I stick it through the front. And now if I were to be holding it this way and say I'm working this way across, I have my empty needle over here. Instead of sticking it in the front as a left-handed knitter would do, we actually come in through the back of the stitches. Uh, if you are, I have to say it's a little confusing at first with some of the videos because of the terminology they use because some of the people like right here my first stitches if I were looking at it this way would be um, pearl knit pearl two knit two pearl two knit two that's what I read when I look at it you can't really tell here but when I'm working on this side I'm doing knit two pearl two knit two pearl two so there are people that in their backwards knitting, they look at this and they see these purl stitches, but they think I have to knit them from the back. That confuses me. And there's other people who are like, it's purl through the back. Um, and it's not through the back, but it's purl backwards basically. And so um, when you're purling backwards, you're gonna stick your, your needle in there and you're still holding your yarn how you normally would, whichever way that is, but you stick it in through the back and then you would wrap it around and go through the front and it's a little awkward, but the stitch ends up being the same. Now there are people that are like smart. They're like, okay, do this, stick your needle through as if you were going to do your stitch. <sighs> Sorry about the cutting there had to cut that sneeze out stick it through wrap your yarn around so that when you come and then turn your work around and see okay this is where my needle goes in this is how my yarn is wrapped and you kind of can um, learn from that what I'm trying to say is that there are some people who also who refer to it as what they're looking at when I'm looking at this I see a purl stitch I see purl bumps Yes, I'm looking at the wrong side of my work. Um, I see pro bumps. And um, in knitting, you hold your yarn in front with knit pearls. Guess what? When you are doing a backwards knitting and you're doing through the back to get so that you don't have to turn your work, you're also holding your yarn to the front if it looks like a purl on this side. And if it looks like a knit on this side, you're holding it to the back. So that helped me to think purls, yarn goes to the front, doesn't matter which way. Knits, yarn goes to the back, doesn't matter which way. You still loop your yarn exactly the same. If you are doing this handed, you become more, if you are a continental knitter and didn't, um, if you are a continental knitter and you hold your yarn in this hand, you can still hold your yarn in this hand, but you become more of a thrower. 
um, because it's working off the other side. Whereas because I am an English style knitter and I hold my hand in my, my yarn on this side, I still hold it in this side. I still twist this way. I just become, it's more, the motions are more like continental knitting, but with this hand. Um, so it's learning. Like I, I know that my yarn comes in front if it looks like a pearl for, to me. I know my yarn goes in back if it looks like a knit to me. Or if that's the stitch I'm doing, if I'm doing a pearl stitch, which could be like here, um, not here, sorry, here, where I'm doing the seed, seed stitch, if it looks like a knit to me, I'm doing a pearl on top of it because it's the seed stitch, and so you're alternating whichever stitches. So if I'm doing a pearl from this side, it looks like a pearl to me on this side, I'm going to hold my yarn this way. If I, if it's meant to look like a knit on this side, I'm gonna hold it back here. Now, on this side, it will look like a pearl. On this side, these will look like knits, even though on this side it looks like a pearl. It doesn't matter to me. I'm teaching myself, this is a backwards knitting stitch. A backwards knit, a backwards pearl. So the backwards pearl, I hold my yarn to the front. A backwards knit, I hold my yarn to the back. I do this the same and I just have to learn where to stick my other needle in, which that part's easy in my opinion. If it's a pearl stitch, you kind of do this. I know you're not going to be able to see it, um, but you kind of go, you're going in through the back here, but you're going like that and then you have to do your wrapping your yarn around and sending it back out through and pulling your needle off. And so then your next one is, my next one's still a knit, or, or still a pearl to me, a knit on that side. And so I'm going to pearl it, maybe. I didn't catch it going in. Wrapping it around, going back out, pulling my needle out, and then just like normal when you switch your yarn around, I'm going to move my yarn to the back because now it's looking like a knit to me. I'm going to be doing a backwards knit stitch, which of course on this side is a backwards or is a purl stitch. And then for the knit stitch, you still are going in the same place, but you don't have to come as over as far because you're going in underneath that that. Thing. but this time I want my needle behind there so that's the thing is you're learning where you're learning how to um, push it through pull it through whatever and get it off the stitch and I somehow yarned over there so that was not a good example and so anyway I'm learning backwards knitting and I just thought it was very cool to learn a couple of things about it that will always help. Number one, you always still do your yarn wraps the same exact way. Sorry. I don't want to lose these two stitches, so I gotta hurry and take a second to put them back on the needle. So yeah, for me it was learning, okay, if I'm doing a backwards purl, my yarn is on the front, just like when I'm purling, my yarn is on the front. If I'm doing a backwards knit, my yarn is on the back, just like I'm purling, my yarn is on the back. That was helpful information for me that I wasn't hearing people talk about directly, but it was a clue for me. I was like, oh, backwards purl, front, purl, front. Purling, you put your yarn in the front. Knitting, you put your yarn in the back. Backwards or regular, doesn't matter. You always loop the same way. It's just where do you put my your needle in? How do you loop? Or like, how do you pull your needle back out to pull up the loop? It's that's the thing is learning just where exactly you put your needle in and how to pull the loop back. And there's different people. One said with the knitting, they had this thing where they kind of lifted the stitch over, and it was that's the one that actually works for me. So when I'm doing a backwards knit, I do this little lift thing that she taught, and I liked that. Um, 
So I just, my advice, if you're learning something new stitch wise, crochet or knit, watch a bunch of people. Um, they will word things differently. They like, you could completely learn the technique from one person, but when you watch another thing, they see something slightly different than it's like, makes that stuff make sense or add some ease to it. Um, just like one person, they emphasized, they like really emphasized that you always do your yarn the same way. Everybody mentioned it, but this one person emphasized it. That was good for me. Um, like I said, one person talked about this lifting technique that she does. That helped me. So watching multiple videos of a technique can be very helpful. Uh, uh, do you know there are so many ways to make a slip knot to begin your work with? And I've watched some crocheters get hooked up. Like people will do challenges where they bring in their siblings or something. And these kids are getting like caught up on how to do the slip knot. And I'm like, there are so many ways to do the slip knot. It, you don't have to do it that way. So many ways. Just like there's multiple ways to hold your needles, there's multiple ways to hold your hooks. Watch a bunch of videos. That's my thing is watch a bunch of videos, figure out what works for you. How is it comfortable for you to hold your yarn and get the tension you like? Uh, when I crochet, I can't, I don't know how well I can show you. We'll pretend that this is crochet. So when you're crocheting, you always have your, where's my end that actually has the yarn. So when you're crocheting, you always have your yarn in the same hand you're crocheting with because you need that tension right here. So you always are doing crochets this way and you have your yarn in the same hand you hold your work in. Um, most people do these like wrappings or whatever kind of wrappings they do. Some people are like the reason they can continental knit and crochet is because they hold their yarn the same. Well, when I'm crocheting, I loop it over this yarn and I just hold it like that. That is literally all the tension I have on my yarn is whatever I get from here and here. Like there's no extra that's my tension. I don't, if I try to loop around, it is way too tight for me and I don't get any. I know that there are people that probably don't do anything more than just whatever tension it gets here. I never could figure it out. And so I just have it like that. That is what I do. I could not figure out how to make that work for knitting. And I couldn't, like my, I it was too tight, too hard. Everything was so hard for me to do continental. So I do yarning or do it this way. And I do loop it around my finger on this side. And then I do my loops like this. That's, but you know what? There's a lot of people do it a lot of different ways and that's okay because there's no right or wrong answer. There's just a, do you get the look you want? Even faster or slower guys. There are people that get so mad. There's this guy, gorgeous work. He ha he does something, he, I, I've noticed that it's very oriental. So I'm guessing it's a thing where they like sit their needle here and then they're doing, it's kind of the um, throwing thing. So it is a throwing method and they have the method, the needle sitting across here. It's really fascinating to watch because it's like, when you first look at it, you're like, oh, they're doing English, but they're not. Um, it's very similar, but there's differences. And somebody made a comment on about flicking being faster, and I'm like, or they basically accused him of being childish because he was still throwing. And I was like, number one, he makes consistent and gorgeous work. Number two, he's fast. Who cares how he's doing it? Who cares if he picks up his yarn and goes like this or not? Who cares if he's right up at the top of his needles or not? He does consistent, beautiful work. He does fast work, but fast or slow doesn't matter. Consistency in your stitches is what actually matters to get a good look. So if it takes you all day to do 10 stitches, that's okay as long as you're enjoying yourself. 
these people are like, rah, rah, rah. I'm like, there's no right or wrong way to knit. There's techniques, even the way that we work in through the stitch that we work into. It's done differently in other countries. They'll work into a different stitch than us. They'll mount their stitches differently than us. It's okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I did not mean to go on a tirade. And I haven't even shown you my mosaic crochet progress. <sighs> that was not the intention of this video. But oh well, it's here. Let's talk about it. <laughs> so my blanket. I'm just going to show you the blue section because that's the one I'm working on. That's how it's looking, guys. It is getting there. I have seven more rows. I'm going to do one row today. I might be able to do two rows tomorrow. I'm really busy this week, so I'm trying to encourage myself to just do a row. A row is still progress. I don't like on this, like, you know, I could do a half a row and call it progress, put a stitch marker in so my yarn doesn't go through, but I'd rather just f encourage myself to do the whole row. So, yeah. That's all we've got. It's looking great. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm very excited to move on to the green just because that means another section's done. So, yeah, the, it's getting longer. It's definitely... When I blade it across, you can't see it, but it comes to here on both hands. So it fits between with just my hands dangling out. <laughs> anyway, that's it today. I just want to remind you guys to let your light shine through whatever you're doing. Crochet, knitting, doesn't matter what your hobby or craft is. I just want you to let your light shine. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.